Well, this week, my buddy Rich over at Hellabass reached out and asked if I'd like to hop on his live stream. <sighs> Truth be told, I have actually been planning to do a live stream with Rich for almost three years now. And considering that I'm about as hard to track down as Bigfoot, I cleared my schedule and joined him the other night on the Hellabass live stream. I didn't know what the topic was going to be until Rich sent me a thumbnail just before the live stream. The topic was, what makes bass fishing lures retro? That was a great question. Just what does make bass fishing baits retro? I did my best to answer that on the confines of our live stream, and I'll drop a link to that down below. But I thought that everybody might like a more thoughtful explanation. So stick around. We are going to dive into just what makes bass fishing lures retro. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass. Welcome to Retro Bass, and hopefully everyone is having a great weekend out there. Yeah, just what does make bass fishing baits retro? Uh, that is kind of the uh, the old million dollar question, isn't it? Well, I probably should have done this on the channel before. I don't think that I have, but let's look to Merriam-Webster at least to define just what is retro? Well, according to Merriam-Webster, uh, retro is relating to reviving or being the styles, especially the fashions <laughs> of the past, fashionably nostalgic and old fashioned. While that may uh, really apply to my attire, AKA the Rayon jackets, I don't know that it necessarily answers exactly what makes bass fishing lures retro. So I'm going to do my best to define retro and perhaps talk a little bit about what it means to fish it old school, as we like to say around these parts. Wish me luck. First off, I think retro is all about perspective. I'm wearing my uh, National Fishing Lower Collectors Club shirt, and if you ever go to an NFL CC meeting, you are going to be blown away by the collections and displays of some really retro baits more of the wood, metal, and feather variety. Well, considering the NFLCC was founded in 1976, when those guys talk about the preservation of vintage and collectible fishing tackle, information, history, and artifacts, well, I don't think they're talking about a pre rappel wiggle wart or a Bagley Balsa B. Those guys definitely focused, at least initially, on the early World War I and World War II era baits. Now from the perspective of an 80 year old NFL CC member, yeah, I think they probably would look at this bait and consider it new school. But you put a pre rappel wiggle wart in my hands and it brings me right back to my first days of bass fishing. And to take this train even further down the line, there will come a day when modern baits like Six Sense and Guggen's are considered retro by the young anglers of today. So retro is all about perspective. It is definitely a moving target, but that's okay. Now what about discontinued models and colors like this Fred Arbogast hula popper in a Red Wing Blackbird? While I don't think it is necessarily a requirement that a lure be either discontinued or rare to qualify as retro, well, looking at this thing, it certainly doesn't hurt. In fact, nothing sends me into a purchasing panic like learning that one of my favorite models or colors is headed for the Antique Tackle Boneyard. Case in point, Hedden came out with this bait a few years ago, a updated version of their classic Slope Nose. It is actually a great looking bait, and although I was initially really excited to fish this, for whatever reason, I never picked it up. Well, fast forward a year or two, I head on over to the LoreNet website, where wouldn't you know it, these guys are in the clearance bin. And if there's anything you know about the clearance bin, that is just one step ahead of the graveyard. 
So I definitely panicked, hit the buy button, and picked up a few. I'm glad I did. Yes, rare and discontinued are pluses, but they are definitely not a must when it comes to being a retro lore. In fact, when I think of old school gold, to me, there is no more retro lore than this. The classic white and red Eppinger Daredevil. They're not discontinued, they're not rare, they're not expensive. You can go into just about any tackle shop today in the nation and still pick up one of these. But for me, when I see this bait, it absolutely brings me back to my childhood. I still remember the first big chain pickerel I saw roll on this exact bait in my buddy Jay's Lagoon off of the Severn River many years ago. And even though I missed that fish, I was shaking for about half an hour. Well, let's just say that every time I throw out a two-fifths ounce Daredevil Imp these days, a few of those butterflies come back to life. So be they old or new, discontinued or available, I think what makes a lure retro to me is that it helps you cast a line back in time and hook a little bit of that past. It's no surprise as collectors we tend to collect what we know and what we remember. And I definitely focus on that 1980s and 90s era of bass fishing. But truth be told, I really do have to do a better job of chronicling some fishing tackle history that was history long before I was alive. Thinking about some classic lures like this Jim Pfeffermino, there's probably already come a time when everyone who remembers when this bait came out is no longer alive. And it's scary to think just how close some classic baits like this are to being forgotten forever. When I think of the countless contributions of companies like Creek Chub, South Bend, Paw Paw, Shakespeare, and Hedden, my mind starts spinning and I start thinking that I've got a heck of a lot of work to do. I remember a great quote that Jimmy Buffett made a few years ago, and he said that folks would often ask him, where the heck is Margaritaville anyway? And I always thought his answer was pretty poetic. He said it's wherever you want it to be. So what the heck is a retro bass fishing bait anyway? Well, good buddies, it is anything that you want it to be. But if you're looking for a little help of finding what is retro, I urge you, join the NFLCC, subscribe to the Bass Fishing Archives, and by all means, dust off Grandpa's old tackle box. You never know what secrets are going to be locked inside. If you guys are looking for some more old school content, you can click right here. Otherwise, I will see you right back here, same time, same place. But until then, keep that carpet side up. And definitely, fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bastard.